Hi guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I'll be sharing with you how I do bottles or glass effects and I'll be colouring in Hannah Carlson's Tales from the Forest Kingdom. I think the process I use to make an element look like glass is quite simple and hopefully it will give you some ideas that you can use in your colouring. The background for this page I've completed with Distress Inks and I do have a How I Colour video on my channel for this page and how I've done the background. The rest of the page I've done off camera. When I first started colouring I found colouring glass really difficult but I think the steps I take now to make something look like glass is quite easy for me and I think the results I get is okay. It's not super realistic but I think it still does look like the element on the page is glass. What I find really important when I'm colouring glass or I find is quite yeah an important feature to have to make something look like glass is the reflections on the glass so the white reflections so what I always tend to do now is start with a white pencil and I mark out or I color in the areas that I'm going to be putting highlights whether it's going to be with just the pencil or with Posca white pen at the end or a white gel pen I mark out those areas at the beginning before I start coloring that that bottle with a white pencil you're not going to be able to see this on the camera and you won't be able to see it even on your own page when you when you place down that white color but what it does is it resists your pencils when you when you're coloring the rest of the elements within the bottle or the bottle color itself so when for example i come to coloring the contents of this bottle after marking out the white areas of reflections with the white pencil when I'm colouring the contents, I will be able to tell as I'm colouring when I'm going over the white pencil. So either it will resist it, meaning not much colour will get picked up from my other colours, or I might colour over that white pencil slightly, but it will be a lot lighter than the adjacent um, area. So when you come in with your coloured pencils, you'll be able to notice where those white areas are. You'll be able to feel it with your pencil as you come to the junction between the paper without any colour and the area that you've laid down the white pencil. So then you know that that area is where you're not going to colour over or if you do colour over the white pencil, you'll go very, very lightly so that you get a very light shade of the particular pencil that you're using. And the reason I do this is because sometimes I don't use Posca in those areas to create the white reflections because once I've added the colour around the reflections that I've marked out, I find that those reflections are bright enough and I may not need to add too much Posca in those areas. I find that it gives a bit more of a natural reflection effect because if you look at a bottle, the reflection is not pure white, which would be what the Posca is. So with the white pencil, it just reduces that brightness of the white reflection. So I prefer having a white pencil finish. Of course, you don't have to do this uh, step of adding the white pencil first if you don't want to. You could go in and do the next few steps first and then just use a white gel pen or a Posca pen at the end to add where you want the reflections. The next step to creating a good glass effect is making sure that you colour the contents inside the bottle first before you go ahead and start doing the bottle or the glass effect. In this case you will see that with my background I did make sure that I went over the areas that are going to be glass a little bit with my distressing so that the background color is continued to make the glass look see-through. Along with the background color that you should include within the bottle space, so where there is no contents, the empty space, you go ahead and add the color of the contents. 
So in this case, I color in the fairy dust, just like I would color it if it wasn't in a bottle. However, the only dis difference is that I make sure that the edges of the fairy dust, so the part of the fairy dust that is closest to the outline of the bottle, is dark. So whatever contents you had, whether it was liquid or anything else, if you keep the edges dark, it will help with giving the glass effect because when we come to color the color for the bottle the glass itself I will also do a dark outline coming in lighter towards the center of the bottle so yeah I just make sure that the edges of the fairy dust is dark and then I color the rest of the fairy dust like as if it was not in a bottle as I'm laying down my colors of the fairy dust I will be able to feel with my pencils where I have laid down the white pencils. So I will either feel it and not much color will be picked up and I'll know, okay, that's the area to avoid. Or I may just go over that white area a little bit, but very lightly because I want those areas to stay light. I want those areas to be the reflection and to be as white as possible. So when I'm looking at my page, I can't really see where those white areas are, but I, I can feel it with the pencils. But certain pencils might be a bit more opaque. So I think I've heard, I've never tried it, but I've heard that Prismacolor White is meant to be a really good highlight pencil. It's quite opaque and it shows up on other colors really well. So if you have a pencil that works and is quite opaque, it may be easier for you. So as I'm adding my layers of fairy dust color, you'll be able to hopefully see on screen the areas I had marked out with the white pencil. It may not be pure white. It may have um, picked up a little, little bit of the pink color that I'm applying. However, it'll be visible where the white areas are. I also go ahead and color in the stars and the bubbles. Um, and I use gel pan for that. So I apply the gel pen and if it's in an area where the white pencil had been laid down it won't pick up as much compared to the white paper to the plain paper so again it will be lighter in those areas which is what I would like and I also go ahead and add any other effects I want within the content so for example that I will be putting the white Posca dots all over my fairy dust so I'll, I'll do that before I start working on the glass itself once I'm happy that I've colored the contents completely, then I start to work on the glass. I have only picked out two shades for coloring in the glass, a dark and a very light green. You can make your glass any color you want. So it could be grays, it can be blues, it can be purple, whatever you would like. Now, I chose green because the background is a green color. And so it will make it easier for me to make the bottle look see-through. So in this case, I have chosen green for the bottle color. When I'm laying down the color of the glass itself, I tend to go from the edge of the bottle being the darkest and I become lighter as I come towards the center of the bottle. I usually leave a very narrow border between the illustrator's outline of the bottle and the dark color that I'm laying down, I leave a very narrow border which will have no color or will be very, very light. In this case, we're lucky because Hannah Carlson has actually included the outline of the bottle, the outermost solid black line, and she's also included another line which is a broken line, um, leaving a little gap between the outline solid line. So I use that as the reference where to start my darkest color of the glass that I'm going to be using. So I start off with my darkest shade of green that I've chosen and I do the outline where I've decided that the dark shadow is going to, the dark color is going to start and I also mark out or I start shading the areas that are going to be shadowed on the bottle. So for example, underneath the ribbon or the rope of the tag, underneath the bottle opening at the top, underneath the rim of the bottle at the top, 
So those are the kind of areas that you'll have shadows or underneath the tag on the right hand side that will, uh, the tag will create a shadow. So those are the kind of areas that the dark green will be applied to. And then obviously as I've applied it and I come into where it's the center of the bottle, I get lighter or lighter handed. Again, as I'm laying down that dark green color of mine, I can feel the areas that I had applied my white pencil to at the beginning. So I will avoid going over those white areas and I will, it may go over it a little bit, it's not a problem. And I will also do it, the dark green area on the other side of that marked out white area to emphasize that reflection. So having that light area in direct contact to your darkest shade will make it stand out more like a reflection. Hopefully that makes sense. I then come in with my lighter shade of green and blend in again to where's the center of the bottle getting very, very light handed so that the shade of the color becomes lighter and lighter. And the center of the bottle should look the lightest. So it may not have any color, it may just have the color of the background that you applied and that's perfectly fine. You can go over your pencils and make sure it's all blended well or you can use a blender pencil or in this case I would I'm using a the Derwent blender pen to just blend out the colors. You want to make your colors look really smooth, a good blend so that you can make it look like glass because obviously glass is shiny. So I spend a little bit of time just making sure that the pencils are all blended nicely. I don't go over the areas of the contents, just the areas where I've laid down the color for the glass itself to make it look nice and smooth. But it's important to not bring in the color when you're doing the blending with a pencil or a pen, not to bring in the color too much into the center of the bottle. You want that area to be lighter than the rest. So once all the colors I've laid down for the glass itself is well blended and I'm happy, I then go in with my white pencil again. You can probably see that the pencil that I'd laid down right at the start of the process of coloring the bottle, you'll be able to see those white areas as reflections already. But now I go in with my pencil again over those areas to make it a little bit brighter white. And if I'd gone over those areas a little bit with color to reduce that color that I'd applied, so to make it, yeah, whiter. Then finally, we can come in with our Posca white pen or a gel pen, whatever you like using, but this is the most important part to make it look like a see-through bottle. And that is to start getting rid of the black lines or that outline the bottle shape. So for me, Posca white pen usually works the best. I I, I used to use Sakura White Jelly Roll, but it doesn't work well for me, so I stick to my Poscas. And I use that to first outline the solid black line that outlines the bottle. And then I also go over the black lines, the broken black line that I'd mentioned that Hannah Carlson had um, added. And I just make sure that every area that is meant to be glass is outlined with the white Posca. And then if you find it necessary, the areas that you've applied the white pencil to for the reflections on the bottle, you can apply a little bit of Posca on those as well. And depending on how bright white you like it, you can leave it um, just by applying it directly to the paper. I like certain areas to be very bright. I like certain areas to be a little bit less bright. So I use my finger to just dab off a little bit of the Posca. So I apply it to those areas and then I dab it off. I don't always do this step of adding the Posca to the areas where I'd added pencil. It just depends on whether I think I need to make that area a little bit brighter to emphasize the reflections. And then if you feel you want any more Posca white pen uh, reflections or uh, highlight areas on the glass, you can do that. And yes, you can go over the contents of the bottle or it's actually important to go over the contents of the bottle to make it look like those contents are inside the bottle. So yes, when you come in with your white Posca, you can put in lines or dots, whatever you want uh, for highlight areas and just go over those content colored areas a little bit to make it look like it's within the bottle. 
And that's it. That's your bottle done. I really hope this video was useful. It was a requested video, so hopefully um, you, you found it interesting. I hope you got some ideas for your own colorings. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, hopefully I'll see you on my next video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.